Welcome, welcome, Craig Owens. Thank you for having me. From how many bands? Eight million, nine million bands? A few. Yeah. Quite a few. To uh, Amp Radio, I am very, very happy to have you here. I feel like this is going to be a very fun one. Yeah, um, happy to be here. What What are you doing here? What are you doing in LA? Meetings, shoots, etc. For things. Are we not allowed to talk about yeah, it? Not yet. We can't talk about it? Not yet. Can't even give like a little thing? It involves me. Solo stuff? Mm. Mm-mm. Okay. All right. Yeah. We'll talk about it afterwards. Yeah, I'm done talking about it afterwards. Okay, so yeah. y- y- thank you so much for being a part of the Emo Night experience for the last, like, what, like, I don't know, eight, like, seven years? Yeah, I think the first time I did it was at the second year anniversary. Yeah. And I actually just had lunch with the guy that set it up um, originally um, through CAA or whatever. Um, and we were just reminiscing about it. And I remember how nervous I was because I'd never DJed and I didn't know what that culture was even like, you know? I mean, I still don't <laughs> know what that culture is like. We still don't know what we're doing. Yeah. But yeah. the, my my favorite memory of you, you know, at least like I know you've done a couple that without TJ and I, and you've gone and done, and it's been incredible looking. Like it's been fucking nuts. Yeah. But our favorite, my favorite thing is when we went to New York and we did like the ballerina stuff. It was great. The best part about it is knowing like I love just showing out and doing the most, and y'all are always down for that. Well, I mean, like, I think, you know, we can, you know, after doing this, I did like a, I didn't, I don't want to say like a deep dive on you yesterday, but I did like a pretty decent, like called people that really, really are Craig Owens stands. Like but, really like, what would you want to hear? What would you want to hear from this dude if I talked to him? Cause me and you can talk fucking forever about anything yeah um and that's like what i got out of listening to all of your bands is that you are always down to do the most yes is that you know and you just put out let's 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 back it up if you couldn't do the most do you feel nuts because that's like the way that we were talking before yeah yes Absolutely. I mean, if, I mean, what got me where I am in life is drive and work ethic, poor kid from Flint, Michigan, and it's embedded in who I am now. I've been doing this for like 17, 20 years. And since I was a kid and I just don't know anything else. And there's nothing worse than waking up in the middle of the night and thinking you're not doing enough and the guilt and the shame that kind of comes with that, you know? So I always try to just give everything I've got every time I have an opportunity to do so. And also the rewards that come from that are so plentiful that I'd be robbing myself if I didn't do that. You said it, you said two words that I use all the time, guilt and shame. Yeah. And it's, it's funny that you say those those two things because that's the exact way that I feel if I am not I, I'll go to bed and I'll be like fuck I accidentally was like crazy to Zach I was crazy to this person today and like I yelled at this and like and I always have to go back and apologize and be like fuck I'm because it's just because I'm trying to do as much stuff and as amount of cool shit that I possibly can and you've been saying you've been doing this for 17 years yeah And it's funny that you say that, uh, specifically the phrase cool shit. I tell people all the time, I just want to get paid to do cool shit. That's what this is, you know? Did you ever think that this was going to be, you know, it's like, we're at a weird, I think, I feel like one time I looked up like how old all of the people that I grew up listening to are. I feel like we're pretty close to the same age, like very close. I feel like we might even be like. A couple of days apart oh wow really yeah, yeah. How, okay how, when's your birthday uh august 26th what year 
84. Yeah, so I'm 84 too. But I'm May. I, okay. I knew that I did that. I yeah. knew that. And it's like, we're at this weird time in, in life where it's like, this is the rest of it. Sure. This is it. Like, we're, it's not going back to school. It's not, I mean, we could. Yeah, I, I had this, it's, it's funny you bring this up too. I had um, this realization last year. Last year, two years ago, recently, that I am a forever musician. You know, there, I think the first decade or whatever of me doing it, I didn't know where I'd end up. I didn't know what would happen. And there were always moments where I'm like, oh, well, is this it? Do I need to go do this? Do I need to go do this? And recently I had that, I mean, I'll just call it like an overwhelming feeling of gratitude because that's what it is. Like, I came to the conclusion, like, this is who I am and this is what I do and I'm not going to fight it anymore. And I think that had a lot to do with bringing drugs back and it had a lot to do with basically just setting up everything to follow through to build out the legacy that I've began to create even though I was unknowingly doing it at the time just chasing creative ideas and endeavors I mean you didn't know when we start doing this stuff we don't know what we're doing right we're just like we don't know what the fuck because I feel like you know out of all the people that I've interviewed I don't think I ever interviewed on the you on the K Rock show. Mm-mm. I don't think we don't did think that, so. um, and I'm glad that we didn't because it was knocked down to five minutes. Sure, that was it. It was just like promoting shit that you know what was happening. Yeah. And um, if you can't talk about like what's happening, then what the fuck are we going to talk about in that five minutes? Yeah, totally. Right. Yeah. So, I, like, I didn't. I don't know what I. I, I tattooed my entire body because I was like, I don't want to do anything else besides committal. I, I, I feel that, you know, same. Like, I, like I want to be in this thing. I don't know what this thing is. And it changes day to day. Sure. Like it changes day to day, which is like, you've started so many bands and you've been in so many projects. I don't know. I, I actually don't know any other person who has been in as many things as you have been in? The only names that kind of come to mind are people that I kind of even look up to, like Mike Patton, or just those those creatives that kind of that kind of fall under that you know um, umbrella of having kind of a multitude of creative outlets. Really, you know. Well, let's talk about the the bands that you have been in. Like let's let's list them off in the beginning, even if they're not on any fucking sure. yeah a DSP. Yeah. Like let's start like when you were a little kid. First band. Chiodos. That was it. How old uh, were you? Fifteen. And then that's what started all of this. All of it. All of it. Originally the Chiodos brothers, and we were told that the name was really stupid and we needed to change it. It became Chiodos, but that was that was it. That was the beginning. And then what'd you do? Uh, band-wise after that? Yeah, let's talk about bands because I want everybody that is listening to go back and listen to your discography. Chiodos was first. Second was... It was either Cinematic Sunrise or The Sound of Animals Fighting. So we'll... we'll Let's stop right there really quick. Sure. Like, let's, you know, we have a lot, I feel like we have some stuff to talk about with Chiodos, but um, Sounds of Animal Fighting, you've been, you know, I, I did a little bit of a, I don't know, dude, you are, people are like post-hardcore. Like, you are, that. does that, I call it music. Like, yeah. I, I call it fucking just music. Like, yeah. you just wrote music. Um, I remember I grew up, listening to things like dream theater sure and like way more metal stuff i have a funny story for you for and which is i don't know we might get somebody got, might get mad at me for telling you this story but i think it's you let's know, hear it what you got the first time i ever jacked off right are, was, are you tying this into dream theater 
I was listening to A Change of Seasons. Do you, you know what I'm talking yes, about? I yes, I do. Okay. I was listening, and it's a fucking... It's a mood. Dude, it's a vibe. It's a, you know, each song is like, what, like 20 minutes long? Yeah. Some fucking wacky shit like that. Yeah. I was in my parents' house in Tucson, Arizona, and I and I was like, the, I, I didn't, I was, that's, you know, I was like 14. Sure. 14, something like that. I was looking at myself in the mirror and being like, what's happening? And I was jacking off to a change of seasons, staring at myself in the mirror. And so I was like, I don't know what, what. You unlocked some levels there. Something I don't know. happened. <laughs> Something happened. And like, who the fuck knows? People are going to be like, this is fucking gross. But it doesn't fucking matter because yeah. like, these are just stories that we, sure. we have. Um, and then I started looking at like all of the things that people have said about you. And you've got this legacy that is post hardcore. And that's like kind of where I started. For, like if you can look at go back and go look at Dream Day, like that was just it sounds like it sounds of animal fighting, but in a different way. Sure, like it's leading you to it's where it is you you're to going. That. Yeah, I'm a I'm a big believer that every single thing we do, everything, every step we take, everything we take in, it's all for a reason and it applies to wherever it is that we're going. I definitely believe that, and I think musically that makes sense. So was it hard to? switch those switch those styles or were you always writing that shit when you're fucking a little kid were you always just like tinkering around i you know my exploring in regards to writing was pretty much just the early chiodo stuff um it all has found a home and there wasn't too much before it you know so you know i wear the post hardcore thing with the badge of honor um it's still my preferred taste in what it is that I play and perform. Um, there's just something special. There's a spark, and, and we go together. And I've just kind of accepted it at this point. But I just love creation, and I love making music. And creation is like my way of like grinding against death. It's like, this is how I survive. Do you know what I mean? This is like how I stay immortal. This is how I, I fight death every day. Like, honestly. And that special moment where you listen to that song or you write that hook or you get that emotion out or you communicate something that you can't communicate casually like, is the the best feeling to me still. And yeah. I, I, it's why I live. It's why I think that you can't stop making me. I don't think that you're ever going to stop. Like, I agree. I, I don't. I just don't. I, you know, knowing you for this many years and knowing how many things that you've said yes to and knowing how many bands that you've been in, it really sounds a lot like me. And I don't think I'm ever going to stop. So knowing you, who actually has a talent. And that can do shit. Come on, you're talented. Uh, dude, Come on. All, this Come is on. this is what I like. Like this is what I like. Yeah, I like talking to people. Yeah, like you're great at it. Thank yeah. you so much, Craig. Yeah, for sure. This is what I like. This I really love. This I've always yeah. wanted to do this. This is something that I've always been really, really interested in. And you know, I tried being in bands. I tried sure. playing in bands. Some of them were really, really fun. Some of them were just stressful. And some of them, I, but that's what led me to doing this and everything. doing yeah. emo night, right? Like what you said is everything that we do leads us to where we're going. Yeah, exactly. Okay. The band before sounds of animals fighting cinematic sunrise. Is that your most fun shit to play live? Because to me, that would be like my favorite thing to play live. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say that. I actually, it was a challenge for me to play it live because it was so timid. And I came from such aggressive roots in Chiodos. So having playing, that was like my first taste of like songwriting. Like, why'd you, why'd you start that? Like, why were you having these hooks that you like couldn't put into other things? Were you having these like verses you couldn't put into anything else? I, in a matter of speaking, yeah. It was, it was more like this can't go in a Chiodos song. And I'm not going to let it die. So I'm going to find a home for it. 
let me connect with some of my best friends and make something that I wouldn't normally make already, I guess. When I said most fun to play live, I didn't mean like now. I meant like as a solo thing, because you've been doing a lot of solo shit. Sure. Like that's what I was listening to. I was listening to all, like I was listening to the, whatever, lexicon of your work, which is huge. It's a huge body of work. It is. It Does it fucking freak you out? I mean, it's got to be like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, there's no way you could have put it together how many hours of music. Yeah, I have no idea, but yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot, yeah. It's a lot. It, and it freaked me out to go into it because, like, there are things that I know about you and I know about your bands, but, like, I really took a fucking, you know, and I went in and I was like, man, I found out so much stuff about this dude that I've <laughs> known for like you know I've known this guy for so long and I didn't realize like how similar that we have to just continuously move are you cuz I'm like I said like when you came in I, I'm a sometimes I'm a difficult person to work with because I know exactly what the fuck I want sure has that been has that been the something in like a theme in your life You've been, I mean, you've not been for a... myself, but for other people, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. I, and this is something like I'm still actively working on, you know, just to be a better person. You just don't want to be a pain in the ass to anybody, right? And I'm sure you can relate. Like, you don't want to do that. Um, but to me, the music has always come first. And sometimes that means I've put it over relationships as well. And I've had to do what I've had to do because of the creation and not giving up and not walking away and not having these certain qualities that I see as like weaknesses. And sometimes that's maybe, yeah, I think led me down difficult roads in regards to relationships, you know, and, uh, with the other musicians and, you know, people in my life in general, I think, you know, but music is, I mean, it comes first for you. It does. Music comes first for me and the creation of it comes first for me. And has it been a, like, I mean, like, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier about how like, you know, I'll go to bed and I'll think about something that I did like, fucking like whatever, like weeks ago or months ago or years ago. I'll wake up, I'll think about those things. Um, is that something that you've like constantly dealt with over the last 17 years? Like, do you sure. think about these things? Sure. I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty active, like oriented, like action oriented. So if I feel that way, I don't know, I'll just go out of my way to make amends whether or not the person accepts it or not. And no matter what, take the steps necessary to let go of it. And that doesn't mean it doesn't pop up in my head in certain moments of, you know, like being reminded, et cetera. But I always make it a point, you know, if there was some sort of falling out to have to make amends. You know, I think that's really important for and not for the relationship, but but f even for myself. I just think it's really important to forgive yourself and, and move on because that's the only way you can truly take accountability and move on and be better. I mean, I, I, I couldn't have said it better. Like, that's that's why every single time I fuck up, I'm like, man, I, I, you have to look at the things that we've... I, I have to look at the things that I've done. Sure. And I'm like, how do I get past this? And it's to for... I have to forgive people that have actually wronged you know like that's, that's part a, of it that's, that's just a hard thing yes it is it's a very very difficult thing but how good does that feel it feels so good and you could be frustrated with the result or with the being wronged aspect or you know the repercussions that continue to last even after you know decades after but the only way to get free of it is is to at least take that step, I think. 
I'm glad we agree on this. It's a nice thing to know. And it's nice to think to know that like, you know, I, you know, there's, there's weeks where I go and I'm like, and maybe you feel this way where you're like, I feel fucking crazy. I feel nuts. And then there are weeks where go by where I feel sane. And I'm like, this is great. I'm going to the grocery store. I'm doing these normal things and going my day to day life. Do you find that like when you are writing music, it comes mainly when you have those moments of fucking feeling nuts or when you're feeling actually like, okay, or is it different with the bands that you've been like, does it change from band to band? In my, in my experience, it changes, um, for me, you know, like, like different experiences have different, you know, like requirements, I guess. But for me, it's, it's just about showing up and not even letting anything outside of that effect. You know, I, I work in sprints and it's just about showing up for half an hour a day and writing a bunch of hooks and then walking away and then being available to do that and setting up my life to best suit that lifestyle. Let's talk about drugs. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's talk about that. Cause I, you know, you called, uh, we, we talked briefly before this interview, like really, really briefly. And I, uh, listened to the entire album. I listened to the entire album when it came out. There was like a week period where I listened to that and that only, you know, when you get in that fucking, that, that like phase where you're just like, I'm going to listen to this and this only. Yeah. And that's like, that's like the only way I consume music is like plasticine over and over. It feels good in the grooves and then, then you let it go and you get some new stuff in there. Yeah. Came out in uh, this year. It's 2022. Yeah. A couple months ago. A couple months ago. What, yeah. like, ju- ju- what was it? Fucking uh, June 17th, I think. June 17th yeah. came out. How'd you, why did you choose to fucking put that out as a drugs album instead of a fucking uh, Craig Owens album? In, that was always, like right now. yeah, that's a great question. It's always been the plan. Drugs has always been the plan moving forward. Um, I just wasn't ready to write rock music again. I had to walk away from rock music for a minute. Um, How come? I just hated it. I hated the sound of it. I didn't, there was just a few years where I didn't want to hear a guitar. I was just tired of it. I thought it was so homogenized and grossly beaten up that I just didn't want to touch it. Um, there was, you know, this, this wave of kind of rock music that just pretty much just turned me off and it felt cringier than normal and I just couldn't do it. Should we shoot? Because I can, I'll <laughs> fucking go, I'll go, I'll go in, dude. I don't give a fuck. Right. I don't want to name any names. Like, I will. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you can. <laughs> like, I fucking will. Yeah. Dude, there's been a ton of bands that have come out where I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm like, how do I get as fucking far away from this? And I'll go into rap. And I'll absolutely. move into an absolutely different style of fucking music because I want to move as far away from whatever the fuck is happening in that scene. Yes, absolutely. And that's how I felt at that time. And, you know, personally, I was coming off of a record that I felt like was kind of a failure. And that was the last Chiodos album. And that really fucked me up. Uh, I can swear. Yeah. You, do, I mean, have Dope. you listened to me? Sure. This entire time. And it just, yeah, it just fucked me up. And I had how, to like how relearn come, how, how come to, you thought it was a fucking failure? It, Chiodos, it, because now I have hindsight, right? Now I can say, like, first of all, I have nothing but respect and admiration for every single person that put all their blood, sweat, and tears into that album. And it had to happen the way that it happened. And we tried our fucking best. Um, there were so many massive hurdles for us as a band to overcome. So much baggage to overcome that it was just extremely difficult to even make happen in the first place. And what Chiodos is, is this like amalgam of sounds and energy and creative um experiments and we take the best and we put it together right and i am no longer interested in reinventing the wheel 
And that's kind of how I felt at that time. So I was coming from a, I want to write songs perspective. And then the band was just in complete shambles behind the scenes. Like no one was showing, we, we had like a studio out here and two guys would show up and they're all living there. We'd have a guy sneak out and go to the bar and get wasted. I'm in recovery at that time. It was just a fucking mess. And the fact that we even got it done is a is a an blessing. accomplishment. And, and like but Chiodos to me is progressive in nature, right? And that album doesn't do that. It doesn't have the spark and it's our fault. <laughs> Straight up it's our fault. Well, I mean, you're humans, right? Absolutely. You're yes. humans. And yes. humans fucking make mistakes and humans don't know how to do everything perfectly. Yes. And I think that it was a really incredible feat that to just get something like that done given the circumstances around it, right? Yeah. And I, I don't hate it or like songs in particular or what it is. And I hope this doesn't ruin it for anybody that's watching because that would be, that's something that I would never want to do is take something away that meant something to someone like that, like the music. But for me, it just is not what Chiodos is. And, you know. Well, I think that that story that you just told really puts a background on it. I think it really actually might spin people to go ahead and look at something in a different light. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm going to go look at that album, but I'm going to look at it in a different way now. Sure. I watched a, um, I watched this video of you. It was like deep down on the internet. And first of all, do you ever look at that shit? Do you ever look, do you ever go back and look at things? If it's live performances, probably not because I've gotten so much better and I just like, I'm like, oh, it's so bad. But like, it's cringy to go back and look at like what you're, what you did. I wouldn't say cringy. I'd say embarrassing. I would say it, it feels embarrassing in moments and like I recognize the energy exchange is a lot to do with this style of music but I know that I'm better than that and I've gotten better than that and I actively work towards being better so I don't revisit the past that often you know was it a live performance? It was, was it a live interview? performance and it was one of you know out of you know, I'm on the fucking internet a bunch. I'm on the internet, like, I, and I am in this world a bunch. And it was where I understood you. This this video, sure. and I and I'm, I'll send it to you if you want. Please. It was where yeah. I understood you, and but the comments under it were like, he made the entire audience sing. He didn't sing. He sung like half of it, and I was like, but that's the that's the point. fucking thing. That's the point. That's the fucking energy. And I felt yeah. that energy in that video. And that's, you know, we've known each other for a while, but that's where I got you. Like, that's where it clicked for me. It's community. It's about them. It's about the fact that they know what I feel. And I can tell that they felt it too by the way that they're screaming back. It's not about anything other than that. I mean, we can also just put on an album and listen to an album. You can't see what you did every time you put on an album. That was, it gave me like goosebumps to walk around my fucking place and watch this. And I, cause I knew what you were feeling and I knew that you, what, how you were conducting this crowd and how the crowd was looking back at you and how you were just in there. Is it hard to fucking see those things where people like just don't get it where they're like why that's like a common thing in my experience and i'm naturally an introvert i get very nervous for like are you, watch, ner watch. Are you, are you nervous right now sure are you yeah i'm i'm very socially awkward and nervous and like i'm really tall you are very tall, so i think people I'm... don't recognize that i get nervous and maybe they take it as like standoffish but you look back on the beginning of this interview and you can you can see it, you know. Um, it's something, yeah, that I just have accepted in myself and kind of like appreciate at this point. So it's difficult for me to 
break that to explain myself. And I feel like anytime I try to explain myself or intention, et cetera, et cetera, about being misunderstood, it kind of always comes back and backfires. You know, you walk in a room and you're like, I am this. And people are like, okay, so he's not that. You know, that's just like the natural response human beings get. I, I mean, think. like, do you feel like you've been a misunderstood artist? Yes, absolutely. Like, I absolutely. think you nailed it, like, right there. Yes. Like, you, you, why? Like, I, I know it's a shitty open question. It's loaded. It's yeah. loaded. Yeah. You want to talk about why? Because I found out why yesterday when I was watching all of these things and I was like this is not the guy that like I know in person I was like this is a fucking rock star like this is a dude that has can write any fucking song can do anything yeah. and be in front of a, like and to see what you know some people are like I just want to be like you can't do that you get like you do we're all good at different things but I feel like this is the big question is like why do you feel like you've been such a misunderstood artist i think a lot of it just has to do with like communication you know and i think a lot of it falls on me for not being able to communicate it properly and not always be willing to when i'm misunderstood sure i'll like talk about it with my friends and my like my safe circle but outside of that, you won't get anything out of me. And I've had to do that to protect myself. Like even on the new drugs record, like one of the lyrics, I built these walls to protect myself. And that's just how I've had to live at this point. Also, I think reputation precedes you. And that's something that I'm, I've been dealing with my, pretty much my entire career. And I think that when you're, when you kind of are so bright, when you shine so bright, you are kind of polarizing. And I definitely have that effect on people. I, my, you know, just recently I was having a real in-depth conversation and, you know, I was told that sometimes I make people look at themselves in ways and that makes them resent because they kind of project whatever it is and they get angry about it, you know? Um, and that's not me trying to come off holier than thou. That's me saying, like, I just feel misunderstood, you know? You know, we we do this thing where we look at people, you know, just as, as people. As I human. can drink this, right? You can do whatever you want. I like that. Dude, cool. this is the easy, this is like the easiest motherfucking thing in the entire world. Like, this is just, this is what it should be. This is fun. Yeah. Like, I like, I just want to talk to my friends and I haven't had anybody on here that hasn't been my friend. Like, and I just won't. I won't do it. I love that. I, I just won't Keep do that. it. I'm, I'm going to. Yeah. And I'm not going to like, you know, I, I got roasted for the first interview that we did, the Pierce Vale interview, because I was so fucking nervous. I couldn't have been more nervous. Sure. I, like, it was it's in a new space and a new place and a new thing after the pandemic i've been alone like i haven't done anything in a studio like, like i was fucking nervous dude just like i'm sure that like you know i don't have to give the examples of the things that you've been nervous for but like you know that feeling i do and i made the mistake of looking at like what people are saying they're like he's fucking weird he's fucked up he sucks he's yeah. a fucking psycho and i'm like this is just who i am and like what you were saying couple minutes ago about being polarizing i'd rather do that oh same that's why i haven't like changed anything i would rather i, do I that. can't i can't i can't fit into the box that you want me to fit in and i'm not going to be the person you want me to be because like that would be a disservice to the people that need to be themselves that are like me and they need some sort of example you know it i think it's just so important and that's the selfless side, there's also a selfish side that is just real necessary for me, you know, um, to just live a happy and fulfilled life. And I, I, you know, I won't do anything if I don't want to do it. And I don't think people realize that because, you know, we talked about at the beginning, I do say yes to things, right? Like 
I I do release a lot of music. You do get a lot a lot out of me, but there is a lot that I won't do, and I I do think that's held me back as well. You know, and I I don't think there's anything wrong with that, dude. This is there's nothing wrong with that, and I think you said something really important. Like this selfish, the selfishness and the selflessness sort of go together. Absolutely. I mean, it's always it's it's energy. It's the world, right? It's it's the pendulum. It's the way that it has to be like i i like people like i naturally just do but that i like talking to people i like doing this shit which is that selfish or is you know does that make me you know it makes me feel good sure to talk to people but i also like listening to people and i like talking and doing all, all this stuff is that selfless like or is it one in the same sure. right like i don't know and i feel like after going and and really 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 i really did dude i spent a lot of time listening I appreciate to music that. yesterday yeah um songs that i hadn't listened to in either ever or years and i feel like you do that with your lyrics i feel like you do that with your songwriting and it really shows at least to somebody like me and i think regardless of the few people that were like oh, fuck he's making your race like, you had 98 percent of the people being like this is the fucking coolest thing totally. ever and we pay attention to this that's just how it works yeah just how it goes sure let's talk about the new drugs album yeah i love it same i love it what are you gonna do or like what's the plan drugs is a forever project for me it's always been a forever project for me um and this new record felt so good to get out and I've already started writing the next one and it's fire too and that's the plan for drugs it's it's a forever project um it's always kind of been you know it's it's my dream it's centered around me it's I bring on musicians that I like and it's kind of it, it moves through, you know, and, but I will always be the one and only member of drugs. I hire them to tour with me. I hire them to come in the studio. Everybody's paid and I get to do what I love. And that is write great songs and create. You're in charge. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I don't have to sacrifice anything. And it took people a while, like behind the scenes, like my team, it took them a while to understand what that really meant. And now they, now they can't get enough of me doing too much. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, that, now I do. it's like, do more. It's like, oh. You got to cross that fucking. Yes. You got to cross that bridge where people are yes. like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, I get it. Everybody else gets it. Keep doing that. Exactly. Exactly. And drugs is that for me. Drugs is, it's just always been the future, you know? Um, and I always plan on releasing it and drugs is centered around great songs and great songwriting. And that's what I'm, I've dedicated the past five to 10 years of my life on specifically is great songwriting. And that's what I'm going to continue to chase with, with drugs. Well, I mean, there's some really hard shit on there and then there's some really like it, it felt like a very encompassing totally. out of all of the stuff that you you've been doing and it didn't feel limiting right and that that's i got it like i really got it when i was listening to all of this stuff yesterday and um if anybody that doesn't know what does drugs stand for destroy rebuild until god shows which is sick by the way thank you like it is really really sick like that's a it's a great name it's Agreed. a it's fucking tight like do you ever just sit back and you're just like that was a cool thing that i did yeah i mean i'm proud of all all the things that i've done they're all special to me but drugs will forever be my my baby especially with this new record and this new album out i feel like it's one step towards where it is that i'm supposed to be and where it is that i know i'm going and drugs is the center of that universe so yeah i i'm always 
reflecting on it and thinking about how great it is. And I think a lot of being an artist in general is consuming something that you love, listening to great music, checking out great art, watching great films, trying your best to incorporate that into it. And if you like cool shit and you like what it is that you end up making, then it's good. And drugs like just is that for me. It doesn't feel hard. This is the easiest record I've ever written. At, at this point, writing music is so easy to me because that's all I do. Like I, it, it, it is literally the easiest thing at this point for me. This record didn't feel hard. It didn't feel... It sounded exactly like what you just said. Yes. It sounded like you've been listening to music you like, watching fucking shit that you like, and doing things with people that you like to do them with. Exactly. And I really, really, really get that out of this fucking album. What have you been watching? Uh, I'm such a... I'm such a media, like, consumer. Um, what haven't I been watching? I mean... It's just like this week, right? Like the um, the Lord of the Rings stuff that has been dropping, I think is just visually so stunning, you know? And I love that. Um, I mean, I'm a big true crime guy. Did you watch Dahmer? No. Half an hour. Okay. Half an hour I made it and I said, fuck this. Really? No. You Absolutely. didn't like it? No, I, I think... I think it's way too close. It, it was way too close for me personally. I, I that, couldn't do it. That's the way I fucking felt about it, dude. I hated it. And I had to push through that until the next like four or five episodes. Like I had to push through And I hate it when people are like, well, you have to get through this thing to watch this. It should grab me and do all this stuff. Sure. It felt so close to home and it is embar it's like almost embarrassing admitting that. I Well, I wrote a song about this concept on the drugs records, the last one called The Arms, and it was inspired by Arthur Schopenhauer, who's a philosopher. And basically the concept is, in order to understand something, we have to empathize with it to really process it and understand it. And I'm not trying to process that shit. I don't want to emotionally feel those horrid, horrid things. And I, I like true crime for the figuring out i love solving things i love knowing immediately and then being justified an hour later when i got the right thing i i knew this case and uh it it's just a tragedy and i just had no interest in empathizing and processing that, it i mean i think that that's what they they did do that they did make it the anti it's sort of like soprano you know sopranos like anti yep. yeah, like like that and they made that happen a little bit but at the same time i was i i don't know i was i was blown away by it i really was i thought it was there were points where i was like all right i gotta go get something to eat and i didn't want to pause it and i would do this and i haven't done this sort of thing in a long time where i like yeah. needed to see what happened every second um but I do understand where you're coming from because it did make me feel fucking weird. I I was so excited. I was like, this is going to crush. Like, what's going to happen? Maybe we'll learn some new stuff. You know, they've been doing this pretty often with different true crime cases. And and I've ex watched some really horrible cases. And it was just too real for me. And the amount of... I just wanted to cry the entire time. I just felt awful awful and i just had to turn it off i'm like i i need to like enjoy my life this is this is not a consumption that i'm willing to walk into right now you know i think that's a really smart way to put it i think that's a <laughs> like but i wanted um you know you i, sure. I, I have to be in that moment to feel those things and Absolutely. i was in the right moment to be like i'm ready to feel like shit yeah like i'm ready to do this um there's times where i can't listen to sad songs Sure. There's times where I can't listen to fucking happy songs. And I was just in the right time in the right place to watch that whole thing in the entire the entire way through. Yeah. And then I watched some other fucking like teen movie. You yeah. know, like I watched like a To Cleanse the Palette. I had to do it. Yeah. But I was like 
uh, it is are, do you do you read are you a reader I'm a massive reader are I you I love reading that that is like my grandmother who's like one of my best friends basically like my second mom um instilled that in me at a young age and I just love reading I never I, I can't do it really can't do it I've maybe read the like three books and they were all like Calvin and Hobbes when I was a little kid yeah what what is it about reading that makes I it I try I don't know I try try to do it what happens is I go I read like a couple sentences and then I'll my mind will go somewhere else sure and then I'll go and back and read those sentences and then my mind it's yeah. it's that that's sure. what it is there have been a couple of books that I have that I have read and that I've gotten really, really into, but it's few and far between. So I'm really envious of people who can fucking sit down and actually ingest that because it's your own imagination, right? Yeah. Like that's that that I think is really a beautiful thing, and I'm just I don't have that. I like I just don't. I need to talk about shit. I need to. If this if we weren't sitting, I'd be pacing. Sure. Like I, this is that's how I do stuff. Yeah. Like I'm gonna figure out a way where I can do a radio show where I can fucking pace around and That'd make everybody nervous and stand over <laughs> everybody because that's just the way that I do it. Yeah. You know. Um, there are there are a couple questions that I that I did did want to ask. Yep. Um, Isles and glaciers. Another one. Another one. Another. Yeah. Another one. I know it's a a one album. Mhm. Mm I know that this is this has been something that every single person that I've mentioned that I'm that I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. They're like is he going to do another one? Is it is it like what it's their it's one of their favorite like top 3s. You know, you're in that top you're in that top three thing for a lot of people, you know, and they're like, ask them about it. I'm like, I don't know what to ask Craig about this. I was in Glaciers was a brainchild of mine and what I consider really to be like Sound of Animals was a whole nother thing, but it wasn't mine. It wasn't my thing. Drugs was the original kind of rolling out of it and even moving forward was kind of a certain thing. Isles and Glaciers is the only group I consider a super group that I've ever been a part of. They would like to lump me in with other things. None of the other things like that I have started, that I have done, have been super groups outside of Isles and Glaciers, in my opinion. Isles and Glaciers was just a brainchild that I had. I somehow convinced Equal Vision to bring in my favorite musicians at the time we had 10 days to write and record an entire EP and we did it. And, um, myself, Vic and Brian Southall, uh, were the main writers on it and we just crushed it and it came out exactly the way that it, it, it needed to, um, conceptually, I don't know where that, where I would even begin to do another Isles and Glaciers. My tastes have changed so much. So, taking out that fan perspective of what I'd want to do and then just like it isn't just about who I'm a fan of but it's like who's on fire and that doesn't mean success I mean like you can hear in their music they are on fire and that we were all on fire and I would never do anything to disservice it because I care about it like we talked earlier I care about it more than anything right so the last thing I would do is just recreate it to recreate it, you know? Um, so it kind of just is what it is. It might be just be one of those fucking and things. It I might think be it's going to be that. That and, blip in time. Yeah. Which I think is beautiful. I think is special. And I think is important. I've been approached over a dozen times to create different versions, to do all of these different things and I've taken a couple steps in that direction it's just not right it's just not right so I'm just not gonna do it if you can't feel it you can't feel it yeah and that's the answer everybody if you guys wanted to fucking hear it yes that's it like it has to feel right and I think that everybody that's probably listening understands like you can't force 
can't force art ever if you force art you make bad art yes which i don't want we, I, I can't do that to myself yeah and i feel like maybe you felt like that that you know we were talking about that earlier how, how long did it take me to bounce back from the last chiros album seven years before i could release another rock record I, I don't have enough time i don't have enough time to release bad music because i don't have enough time to heal from the pain i feel in regards to it i just can't well that's why we're doing your solo stuff that's why we're doing drugs we have anything else not that i'm working on currently i mean chiodos is always my baby it's just gonna always be that it is what it is high school middle school friends just doing our thing um i mean do you still have the relationship with those guys like i mean like that's the thing is like you know i still have the relationship with the guys that i, I, I was in fucking high school bands but they're all doing different stuff they're married they're all doing a ton of shit but it's like we'll always have that like moment in it's time it's like brothers right like, yeah that's how chiodos is we're brothers and that doesn't like Maybe we talk less than brothers. I definitely have those relationships still with, with certain members. Um, and certain members, it just never bounced back after the first little fracturing. Um, but, you know, we get offered shows all the time. We say no all the time. But everybody is available, willing to listen, and would if... If the trigger was pulled in in kind of the right way and yeah it's really beautiful dude yeah it's like re it's a really beautiful thing to hear and it's a really nice thing to like say about people that you've known for for so long and i don't have any ill will towards any band member that i've been like in a proper band with i like i said earlier i i always make amends you know and whether or not they choose to carry something or be shitty or something is on them but like, I can't think of anybody that I haven't actually completely sat down one on one and made amends with, um, out of all of my projects. Well, you Craig, know, well, Craig, we can only control ourselves. Can't control anybody else. Sure, we can only control what we do and how we feel. For the most part, can't control anything else. But I, I mean, and I really. I can't speak highly or, or higher I don't even know if this is the right thing but like of that the drugs album like I, I was I, I've been I revisited it at, when it came out and I got to do that again and uh, I just I appreciate you for A being a lot I feel like very similar to you in a lot of ways but, I, but you're actually the person that puts out things um, so I, I just, I really appreciate you. I appreciate your art. Uh, and I appreciate you. your friendship, man. I appreciate all that. Thank you. It's, I don't know if you were trying to like put a bow or, or no. go a certain way. I appreciate the sentiment no. very much and, and the kind words. Thank you. Um, you know, going, going on that, I come from the school of thought that it's not about what you do, but it's what you create. And as an artist, it's so easy to be focused on what it is that we do. And for me, I'd rather just bury my head into the creation and just continue to create. Well, I think that you're gonna get to, you're gonna do that for the rest of your life. I know you are. You're gonna be a fucking old guy doing wacky shit. Yeah, I know you are. Anything else you want to cover? Check out the new drugs record. Um, I don't know. Is there any? Are there any questions? Were there, was there anything from any of those people that stood out that you didn't ask? Or I mean, there was there... there was some stuff like I wanted to talk about like Gex. I wanted to talk about Anthony Green. I wanted Green. to talk about like We're I'm done to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Well, it's I really mean, up to you. I mean, like I, you know, you, you put out the the <laughs> like. There is a lot of stuff, man. Like I, there is a lot of stuff. Um, I, I was personally so impressed with when, well I was also I was I was pissed because I was like Gex did the right thing like when they asking you to to do this it was like my favorite one of my favorite songs that they had done and then you remixed it with them and I mean so when you're 
Did you know about them when you went into this? So I had worked with Dylan multiple times the few years leading up to it. He was like one of my favorite up and coming artists. Like I, every day I'll just go and find new music and that's just something that I do for myself. And you know, what are people doing? What's the sound design like? What's the songwriting like? What's their aim? What are they trying to do? Like this is, there's so many levels to this for me. And you know, during um, that, that break where I was just doing bad channel stuff and then kind of just doing that for fun, but also just being at home, healing, spending time with my fam, family and friends, um, I found this pocket of amazing music that inspired me and made me want to make music. And Dylan was a part of that. And um, he's just a great guy. I just love Dylan. The first time we met, um, I had a, I got a house out in Laurel Canyon and I had like a bunch of my favorite of those musicians kind of come up and we were just making music and hanging out and talking about life and I was just picking their brains because I'm just naturally curious. And um, I, I remember... He showed up like maybe like an hour or two earlier than everybody else did for the session. We sat outside talking and I remember I felt so comfortable with Dylan from the first time I met him that I remember closing my eyes and whistling Seal's Kiss from a Rose just because I wanted to prove to him that I could whistle. It was like, it was such a special moment for me because getting me to be that vulnerable is so difficult, but it felt so natural with him. And to just have a bro moment like that in a moment like that could be awkward, it, it could potentially be weird, you know, was just special. And I I just think that that 100 Gex record, that first record, is one of the best albums that I've heard in such a long time from the sound design to the songwriting. And um, it was he, it was different. It, it was it was so necessary. It was it was it I think it changed the course of current music. Yes, I absolutely agree. And I think that they he, he will continue to do that and so will Laura. Um I have nothing but amazing things to say about about both of them, but um we had written uh multiple songs prior and um then they were kind of popping off and he just randomly called me and asked if I would do it and I, you know I'll always make music with Dylan anytime he pushes the button so I was there and it turned out phenomenal you know it's it's, it's you know it was like a think you know when you do that like uh rapped or whatever the fuck yeah that was that was in the in the top of um I uh I'm, I'm bummed because we were supposed to do this fucking New Orleans thing and it was like I, I finally yeah finally like I was like, yeah, they're doing it. It's great. I get to like see this. I get to do this. Like, it's fucking. Was Lewis Grant at that session? Lewis was not. No, I'm familiar with Lewis. A, extremely, extremely talented artist as well. Again, like it's one of those things where I feel I need people to know about. Yes, I, I was. Key of C by Dylan Brady. Like Key of C was my actual intro to the K Rock show. I use that Fire. as like that. And then I moved in into like, but other stuff, we don't have like an intro to this thing. It's just like, we go straight the fuck in. Yeah. But that was, you know, I b got to build a, an intro and that was what I wanted to do. So I was like, when you came out on that, that fucking song, I think it took, I think what it did was it bridged the gap between the kids that were listening to things like 100 Gex and kids that were, and adults that were listening to emo and hardcore stuff. And I think that it made this community of, to to be okay. Like, I think it brought people together. I think it, that song is a lot more important than I think maybe you have thought about or anybody has actually thought about because it, brid it bridged that gap. As, at least in my opinion. I agree. I, I agree. I could be wrong, you know? I don't I don't think you're wrong at all. I think that they are the type of group to even pull something like that off and to be able to make that impact. Like, you talked about how they've had their impact on 
music in general you know he's done a lot of like the charlie xcx stuff too and it, you see it everywhere like a majority of listeners didn't know like what hyper pop was now a majority of people do and anytime you can share cool stuff like that with different audiences and make it connect i just think it's special so i i completely agree with you what i completely do you, agree what's going on right now what are you listening to what have i been listening to it's always you know that question I um, know it's a, it's a it's a hack question, but it's also like a true question because I you know I switch it up every couple weeks, right? Like yeah. I switch it up every couple weeks, and some days I'll be obsessed with pup, where I won't fucking listen to anything but that. Some yeah. days I won't even listen to music; I'll just listen to podcasts. There's like yeah, but I am trying to constantly find stuff, so I'm always I, I truly am interested in what you are listening to. It's not just like what are you listening to. Yeah, um, I could grab my phone and look at my Spotify list, like my like songs. You wanna? Yeah, I will. Do it. Let's do it. I mean, definitely a uh, a group that I've been listening to a lot is Tsunami. Just because I love the fuck you riffs, and it just makes me happy. Um, I think that there's like that whole new wave of hardcore is just so fire and it shows that it's really connecting with an audience the way that DIY punk inspired culture should and they're obviously one of the the forefront bands on that um <laughs> my favorite artist is uh, I wouldn't Favorite, top three, it's hard to even say this. Gucci Mane. Yeah. I love Gucci Mane. I'm I love reading, Gucci I'm rereading Mane. his book right now. He's a genius. He's an actual genius. He's an actual genius. Actual genius and so inspirational. And knowing kind of where he comes at and then being able, you know, from even reading the books and just hearing the heavy trap music is just exciting to me. It it pulls together my favorite parts of EDM and it's reminiscent of even music that I've released because it's just heavy and dark, you know? So a lot of Gucci Mane. He's also a transformative person. Agreed. Like what he has done and where he is now. Yeah. Have you read his book yet? Yeah, I read I mean, I read half of it. It's, and like, I it's did, like a small portion I, type thing, right? Yeah, I did the thing where I kept reading it over and over and over again. And I was yeah. like, I'm going to finish this. Yeah. But it, no, I've read half of it. It's amazing. Like, I'll finish he's amazing. It. Um, I really like uh, Chat Pile. I've been listening to them. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know them. Dark, heavy, different, cool. You'll just like it. Like how? How, how, how do you how do you spell it? like it's chat? Like, I like this because this is C H A T. Yeah, and then pile. Cool. Like a pile of leaves. Hell yeah. Um, Great. Let's put this on. Let's see. I went through a phase where I was revisiting every <laughs> every uh, decade of all the hits, and I just was listening to every single hit, and I would do like a decade at a time and just study it. And that was recently um, a lot of piano music. Breakins, do you like Breakins? I haven't heard. Breakins is it, phenomenal. Dude, I'm really You're gonna love Breakins. Fucking this shit up. Hold on. Let me just look up chat pile. Let me look up fucking Breakins here. Yeah. Like, is okay. Breakins is like reminiscent of a hundred Gex in a way, but also James Blake. Okay, I got it. And I mean, like, I was doing. Yeah, you know, I really. There's a. There's a. You know, Glave, like I like Glave, right? You know, mm -hmm. like he was. I had him on so long ago. On the, it was during the pandemic, right? Like it was during the pandemic, and I was staying at my fucking sister's house. And everybody's like, "Who is this? Why would you?" Want him on? And I was like, "This kid is fucking. He's got it." Yeah. Like, I like this kid's got it. Yeah. And it was really nice. It was like nice to talk to him because he's. I'm fucking old. He's like 15 or so, 15, 16 years old. And I'm like, man, he's like doing shit that like, if I was making music when I was that age, like I wish that this was the thing. These are the things that I would have made. Is it like that? Is Breakins like a little bit on the... I never would have conceptualized what Breakins does when I was younger. He 
kind of just like nails all of it for me. And yeah, I mean, it like it to me, it has just the songwriting, the great songwriting of like a hundred Gex or, or Post Malone even. Post writes great songs, um, with a little bit of the sound design from hundred Gex, but more kind of almost like midwest emo guitar riff type beat in moments it sounds like all of the things that i like fire it's or, just fire and it the his voice is so beautiful because he has that that james blake baritone where he can get down and be sultry but then he'll crush some falsetto right afterwards and it's just overwhelming how talented he is i mean he's blowing up and i, th- I think he's going to be you know Whatever he decides to be, because he's brilliant, you know? Craig, hold on. You, I fucking forgot to do this. Shit. You, uh, TJ got you a gift. I brought you gifts. Here. He said that you, what uh. Is oh, yo! <laughs> he said that you, uh, responded to, like, this, th- that thing. I was so excited about this. Dude, I put cigarettes in mine. Yo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, like, a plant. It, that's what it is. It's like a light. He was like, dude, I, I wish I could stop by, but we're doing, you know, he's he's somewhere else doing some other shit. Yeah, but no he, worries. He stopped by my house and like gave this to me and he was like. I'm so excited about this. I was literally going to order one next week. Thank you. Dude, you're welcome. Thank you. Like this was, I got one for him. I was like. That's I what he said because I saw it on his story and I was like, I didn't message him until like a day or two later because I couldn't stop thinking about it. I was like, that gives me like zen and peace and almost this like retro futurism vibe that like I need in my life every day. And yeah, I just love it. Dude, so thank you. You're welcome. I I literally just, I put cig- like cigarettes in mine. <laughs> I'm like, tea. <laughs> like mine is all fucking like wacky, you know, but it, mm-hmm. like I stare at it all like all fucking day. Yeah. It's right next to the TV and I'll just be like, I was cruising, but... T- from TJ, thank you, to TJ. Make, yeah, legend. Wa- wanted thank to you. make sure that that I did that because I could fucking go, and I was like, God damn it, dude! Like, I'll forget this. Like, he brought it. I knew I would like forget. Like, you know, my brain fucking all over the place. You know, I uh, I brought you both some drug shirts. Too. Did you really? I, it's not quite the Zen out thing, but I did. Yeah, we just dropped a new line, and uh, I got them sent to my house. And I was like, I was taking photos in them yesterday before my flight out, and I was like. I need to bring these. And Thank I need, you, dude. Yeah, absolutely. I, I wonder if there's like a link or something. I don't know. We've never done that before on like this sh- this yeah. show, but we could probably like, we'll figure Destroy out. Destroyrebuild.shop. We'll, it wasn't even part of the plan to plug it. I was just going to give it to you after, but there we go. There we go. Yeah. All right. I think we have to wrap it up. I think this is the longest Sick. interview that we've actually done. I'd be talking. We'd be, do you not nervous? <laughs> are you nervous anymore? <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. No. It takes a little bit, right? Like it takes a little bit to like get in this groove. I love being here with you. Like I really See? do. I was I, I was looking forward to this very much, and I and I hope that this interview was fun for you. Yeah. Anytime I get an opportunity to communicate like this, um, is appreciated. And just thank you for your time, and thank you for all you've done for the community. Like. I don't think people on the outside really understand the impact that something like Emo Night has had. I think that you have, I'm not going to say single-handedly, but pretty close, been a main driving force for the massive wave of nostalgia that's happening right now. And you've employed a lot of my friends, and you've taken care of a lot of musicians that shouldn't be forgotten. And... For that, I will be eternally grateful. Thank you, dude. That's one of the sweetest things that anybody's ever said to me. Legit. Um, I, I And I say this from the bottom of my heart, I wouldn't be here without you. You know, it goes, that's, this wouldn't exist without you. Craig Owens, thank you so much for coming to Emo Night Radio. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Let's do this again. Anytime. All right, brother. I love you. Love you. Where you're like, dude, this was awesome. Yeah, man. I really do. Just like...
You are tall. I am very tall. Here, for, for sure. you and TJ. Dude, hell yeah. Thank you so much. Dude, Here, absolutely. You know what? We'll, uh... Y'all make it look cool. Well, we're gonna, pl like, we'll plug these. I mean, we can really do whatever we want.